I think um, my work really allows people to see plastics in a different way, see the beauty they possess. I want people to feel like hope for new possibilities with the material and uh, new appreciation for the material. Hello, my name is Sayaka Gantz and uh, I'm an artist specializing in use of reclaimed plastic items from people's homes to make animals mostly that are um, very colorful and alive and in motion. Growing up, my mom had all these different um, craft hobbies and so she would always give me leftovers from her projects and I think I really enjoyed um, using scrap materials from her as a child to just try to imitate what she's doing but at the same time being able to do my own thing with them. Um, I was uh, the kind of child who loved um, putting puzzles together and so using existing forms and shapes and kind of moving them around in my head and in the physical you know, space and uh, seeing how they fit together. That's really a very um, joyful experience for me. And uh, I think right now what I do is an extension of that. When I was in college, um, I was introduced to welding in a one-day workshop that I took during my uh, junior year or sophomore year. Actually, a little bit later in the program because um, I had already declared my major in printmaking, but at that point, I just fell in love with welding. and. Um, all I had access to for materials, because I didn't have a car back then, was a pile of scrap materials um, from other students' projects that we had kept in the sculpture yard. So I would just use materials from there and start welding animal forms together. It was uh, more recent that I switched to plastic. Um, after graduating from college with a degree in printmaking, and uh, I continued to make um, scrap metal animals for about five years. Um, and at that point, it just started to feel uh, a little bit stagnant. I was still enjoying the process, but um, it felt too repetitive for me and uh, they wanted to explore a little bit more. So I decided to go back to school, go to graduate school in Bowling Green, Ohio. And uh, there, um, while I was just exploring and um, doing research, which is like for me, uh, shopping at the, um, uh, the thrift store, just kind of looking, browsing the aisles.
I just happened upon this um, kind of a mattress, no, not mattress, um, like a comforter bag, you know, those kind of square formed um, plastic see-through vinyl bag. Um, it, it was full of this yellow chain, plastic chain from, I think, a child's swing set. And when I saw that, because I'd been using my metal chain for my animals, it just was easy for me to visualize um, and envision a, a plastic animal similar to what I do in metal. And from then, I started looking at plastic items differently. I just saw all these shapes that could be um, like the muscle of an animal or the hair movement. And uh, I started to see them more as potential brush strokes. And uh, I started collecting all kinds of plastic items. I'm from Japan. And uh, in Japan, we teach children that everything has a spirit in this world. It's like a form of shamanism. And in Japan, this philosophy is called Shinto, Shintoism. And uh, so we're taught, you know, at a young age that even like a pencil has a spirit, even, you know, like a notebook, even spoons and forks. I want the plastics to also feel that because I feel so bad when I look at the objects on the shelves at the thrift store. These items were created for us and uh, I feel like you know we have a responsibility to them but uh, so many of us kind of forget that there's value in them because they're so cheap a lot of the times the plastic items if you can buy it for a dollar then a lot of times it's um, cheaper to replace it than to take good care of it and to um, dispose of it properly or to go and retrieve it if you forgot it somewhere I don't know maybe because um, I moved so much as a child I relocated to different countries growing up and like I experienced like feeling like I don't fit in anywhere a lot of times. So I have a lot of sympathy for these items that were you know, cast off from their homes and uh, you know, kind of lost their purpose. And to be honest, I mean, kitchen items, I, I would not buy a plastic spoon from a thrift store to use in my kitchen. So it just seems kind of hopeless. And uh, I wanted to find a way to make new places for them to belong to where they can feel like they're truly beautiful and appreciated and free and they can experience almost like being alive. They can turn into brush strokes basically. So I usually like shapes that are uh, tapered on one end. And uh, so coat hangers are great, spatulas are great, um, serving forks, um, molded plastic like animal kind of things, those I can't really use. Um, and I have a lot of people like trying to give me stuff and uh, it's often really difficult for me to describe what I'm looking for to them because um, I know exactly when I see which piece I can use and I can't, um, which piece I can't. But um, for other people, it's often very difficult to understand um, what my thought process is behind that. Well, the armature is like a skeletal structure inside of a sculpture and um, 
Some of my sculptures have that and some don't. I would say like anything over over like a foot long, I would make an armature for. And it's usually um, like a very simplified um, kind of general form. If it's a penguin, I would make something like an elongated football kind of shape with the wire. Um, you know, if it's a whale, then I would have, in addition to the elongated kind of shape, I will have the, the armature for the fins as well um, and the tail. It's usually kind of like, I'll, I'll make it about an inch deep inside of the animal's body so it's not right there out on the surface but just a little bit in so that if I attach a piece of plastic outside of it then that's creating the silhouette of the animal. When I'm um, attaching the plastics, I feel so much more free um, and it's almost like I'm not even thinking. My hands are just moving for me and I'm letting it happen and I'm just watching and uh, you know, sometimes I'll step away and look at it and it looks like the animal is almost like smiling at me and uh, yeah, it, it's really fun. I, I feel so um, childlike when I'm doing this. What I always want uh, is the pose that's physically possible that gives me um, the most dramatic kind of sense of movement as possible, that makes the animal look graceful, that allows me to use, um, you know, like if you imagine like a cartoon motion line, like behind the person who's running or something. Know, like those kind of lines. Um, I, I want to add those to the sculpture, so a pose that allows me to do that. Yeah, that, those are the ideal for me. I think. Um, my work really allows people to see plastics in a different way, see the beauty they possess. Um, and I think as important as it is for me to like be recycling and be sustainable, um, I don't really want um, my art to make people feel guilty. I want people to feel like hope for new possibilities with the material and uh, new appreciation for the material. And what I've been saying lately is like, we all know that um, with the garbage patch in the ocean and everything, we all know that there's a lot of plastic inside the whale, but not many people know that there's a whale inside the plastic. And I want people to be able to see that.